Well, as you come in the atrium to enter the museum, the dominating structure you see before you is this great compass rose on the floor and our Foucault pendulum. This Foucault pendulum was discovered in 1851 by Leon Foucault, a Frenchman. He set up this enormous pendulum in Paris and it was going back and forth on a hundred foot wire and they were mesmerized by the fact that this was going back and forth and what it was doing, it was clocking off to the eastern. They couldn't figure out why it was clocking off to the eastern until they finally realized with much consideration that the earth is turning on its axis and this pendulum is responding to outer space. It responds to the sidereal. It will go back and forth towards the North Star until it eventually loses its momentum. In here, at our latitude, it moves ahead one degree every six minutes. We just knocked down the first pin down here, and now every six minutes it will knock down another pin, proving that the Earth is still rotating on its axis no matter what we do to the poor old Earth. It continues to do that. It goes around the sun, it does all the things the Earth does, but it continues to go back and forth towards the North Star. Now, we have a pet, our pendulum, the only one in the state of Maine, going back and forth here, and it is advancing because of this, th this phenomena, one degree every six minutes. We just knocked down the first pin here, and we have three more pins to go. Every six minutes, it will knock down another pin. Oh, it just ticked that one right there, and that means that it is just about to fall. It's there. It's making its advancement one degree every six minutes mesmerizing kind of thing. Well, come and check out this model of the SS United States. Incredible detail uh, done on this model. An unbelievable thing. Actually, back in the 1700s, George Washington decided we needed a Navy, so they built six of these armed frigates. The Constitution, the Constellation, and the United States, the only surviving one now are the Constitution and the Constellation. But this is a model worth spending some time on. The detail is really very impressive. All of these models on the East Wall were made by one man from Camden, Harry Lauer. He developed all these 25 models in 10 years and they are exquisite. Take a look at these. These are pond models. They all have engines in them. The engineering inside the vessel is really very complete, wonderful, wonderful models. Tugboats, New York tugboats, fishing vessels like the Manhattan boat here, big ones, small ones, all of a different character. Some uh, warships, wonderful models, all made stick built from, not from kits, but from the real thing, his workshop. Well, take a look at this photograph up over your head here. This is Rockland Harbor, 1882. Rockland Harbor, it was an old fog mall, the way we get a lot of fog here on the main coast, and these vessels, all of these vessels, were waiting for a fair breeze to blow the fog away, and they were all getting underway at the same time. They're cargo vessels, they're loaded right to their decks with cargo, headed out to all different parts of the world, and the clearing breeze came, and they're all setting their sails all at the same time. Rockland, I don't know if you knew, is a powerhouse of economic activity in the 19th century. An amazing harbor Rockland was at that time. It, there was so much commerce in and out of Rockland Harbor that in 1891, 1892, 1893 and counting, Rockland was the fourth largest seaport in the United States. There was Boston, New York, Philadelphia, and Rockland, Maine. Rockland shipped more goods in and out of here than any of the rest of the seaports, those exceptions. An amazing harbor back in those days, and it still is a wonderful harbor for sailing vessels today. This vessel spinning around over my head here is the Joe Lane. She's an 1851 revenue cutter built by the governor to, to protect our ports. Bob Douglas, when he built the bomb the, the Shenandoah, the schooner Shenandoah from Martha's Vineyard, he modeled it from the Joe Lane. And he was a great supporter of the museum, so we call this the Captain Bob Douglas Atrium. Let's go into the next room now, and I'll tell you, show us some of the old boats and some of the wonderful things we have.